the alphabet. We take it for granted. In English, the 26 letters of the alphabet make up half a million words. In the beginning, people used pictures to tell stories, ancient cartoons. Picture writing, called hieroglyphics in Egypt, often involved more than 700 symbols. Then, the alphabet was invented. But by who, where, and when? David Sachs is a writer and a journalist from Ottawa. In Letter Perfect, he traces the evolution of letters backwards to the roots of Egyptian hieroglyphics. I met with him in Toronto, where he explained how the transition first began. Hieroglyphics used pictures of objects used in various ways, and we believe the earliest alphabet borrowed some of these pictures and turned them into letters, and the letters, in many cases, evolved to become the letter shapes we know today. So here we have an, an eye with an eyeball. An eye with an eyeball, as an Egyptian hieroglyph. And later, in around 1750 BC, it shows up in alphabetic writing as much the same shape, a little more roughly rendered. But by about 1000 BC, it shows up in alphabetic writing like that. This is the eyeball. The letter O. So the letter O was once the picture of an eyeball. The letter B, the picture of a house. And the letter E was a man with his hands up. It's striking. In the earliest alphabetic writing, the E letter shows up as the image of a stick man with holding his hands in the air and sort of jumping up. It's actually striking. It's, he's standing like, this is a stick man. He's standing like this, jumping up in the air. <laughs> and You just look like an E doing that. You look very much like an E. In Egypt, before the alphabet, ordinary people couldn't master the art of writing, and it remained the secret knowledge of the elite. But then something incredible happened. And what we think happened is that someone from the outside, a member of the underclass who, who was a Semite, he might have been a slave. He looked at this hieroglyphic system and he said, why don't we just use 25 or so symbols to mean precise sounds for our speech, Semitic? In other words, some ancient genius made the pictures equal sounds. And so, when they saw an Egyptian picture, such as an ox, they called it by the Semitic word for ox, which is aloof, and made it equivalent to the ah sound. Later, they rotated this ox head on its horns and created the letter alpha, the English letter A. Anyone could learn the letters of the alphabet. What the alphabet did was it made reading and writing so simple that non-scholars could master it. So it was revolutionary. It was revolutionary, yes. It was one of these landmarks in history that opens up power to a wider um, group of people. In pursuit of the alphabet story, I now travel to the Sinai Desert, modern Egypt, to look for early alphabetic inscriptions. We go to a place called Serabit El Khadim, 400 kilometers south of the Nile Delta. For thousands of years, Egyptians mined turquoise in this area. Often, they use slave labor. The ancient turquoise mines are off the beaten tourist track. The only ones who know their way in this area are the Bedouins, who still live at the foot of the mines. We got here, paid our respects to the local sheikh, and recruited one of his sons to show us the way. We heard that there are inscriptions here, carved by Semitic slaves. And sure enough, there are slave inscriptions here, and one of them records a 3,500-year-old cry, God, save me. This is the writing of a slave, a slave who worked in this mine. You can still see the chisel marks, which were part of the forced labor that the author of this inscription was involved in. 
and he wrote his cry to God, saying, help me, don't forget me, here where he worked and he slept and he probably died. And it represents an incredible moment in human history. Not only is it the first inscription that records the name of God, El, but it also records the oldest or maybe the second oldest alphabetic inscription. It's the basis on which Hebrew, Aramaic, Greek, Latin, English, Arabic, all is based on this writing. Pretty incredible that after all these years, we would be here to record this man's cry. The Bible records that Moses mobilized Hebrew slaves that labored in caves such as this one, and with the help of divine miracles, led them to the promised land. Is it possible that one of the reasons for his success was the ability to mobilize masses of slaves using a brand new method of communication, the alphabet.